Hey guys, today I am going to talk about Andrew Yang, who is a nightmare for ratings on cable TV. And that is my conspiracy. Again, I don't really have too much evidence outside of data. I do know that when Andrew Yang appears on cable TV, the ratings tend to go down. And it's not because people are less interested in Andrew Yang, although that might be one reason, um, but it could be the demographics of people who still have, I don't have cable TV, which is really funny because I advertise probably a couple million dollars on cable TV a year. We just signed a new deal with one of my clients with Comcast, actually two new deals with Comcast, and I was at ABC a month ago trying to figure out a deal with them. Probably soon. I think there's actually, they're coming back to the table Monday uh, to figure out some uh, rates. But uh, cable TV, a lot of my clients are very traditional auto dealerships, emergency rooms, dentists, uh, hospitals, lawyers. They like cable TV, okay? No matter how much I dislike it, they're going to run it with it. So uh, might as well help them when I can. So let me um, explain why Andrew Yang is not popular, so not popular among cable TV for rating sake. In cable TV, you want people to do crazy stuff. You want Donald Trump. You want him to bomb X, bomb Iran, kill this general, because then there's a lot of really easy, debatable topics where people can give opinions. Right? Opinions are not necessarily based on fact, and they're really easy to do. And then you can have this guest on, and you can have this guest on, and they can explain their opinions. So whenever you, um, so in terms of per quality production, most news networks are not concerned about fact checking, editorial, and that's why Andrew Yang has. I mean, I do think that part of it, maybe in the very beginning, the mistakes were made because the editorial process was very poor. But now it is targeted harassment, essentially from to Andrew Yang. In my opinion, it's really easy to understand why they would do something like this because Andrew Yang does not help their ratings. He's just a normal guy who talks to you normally as if you were having a conversation. I look at him talk to Tucker Carlson. It's just a conversation. It's an educational conversation. Well, we all know PBS has terrible ratings most of the time, so... <laughs> Americans do not give up two blanks about education or fact checking. I mean, one good example I have for you is uh, when I grew up, the History Channel actually had history on it. No aliens or people looking for lost treasure. What was that History Channel thing I was watching? It was a dude who thought that a pirate with the technology of. He thought the pirate hid the treasure in like the center of an island via a well. Like it would cost hundreds of thousands of dollars for modern technology to reach this treasure because there was an air gap. So they used sonar to find that there, oh, it was an air gap. I was like, dude, this guy just had like a shovel and some laborers. <laughs> I don't think he could go down a well, swim down the well, and there was like piping and stick. I was like, there's no way. And then of course, you know, Bigfoot, uh, every History Channel season has eight or ten New shows about finding Bigfoot. I think there was one about finding Bigfoot in Vietnam or something. Uh, so the History Channel, or, you know, the aliens make the pyramid. So the History Channel is a very good example. They called themselves the History... Oh, what was that other one? Um, Boo Boo. What was her name? It was like... Oh, that wasn't the History... Oh, the Learning Channel. Duh, that was even worse. TLC, the Learning Channel, had Honey Boo Boo. What are we learning from Honey Boo Boo today? Um, so that's TV. That's, you know, when you have the Learning Center and their main show at one time was Honey Boo Boo, which was this uh, overweight child who um, went to beauty pageants and her mom was overweight. It was just very sad. Like, I felt sad for Honey Boo Boo because I don't think... Um, I mean, obviously, they're very rich. And then Duck Dynasty. Was that History Channel and Learning Center? Sometimes I can't tell the difference. Um, but History Channel, for instance... Every other episode is about, oh, on Shark Week, it used to be about real sharks. Now it's about fake sharks. Um, is the Megadon still exist? Oh, I saw a picture of the Megadon, which is really me enhancing a JPEG picture. It's like, 
No, the Mega Bond does not exist. Loch Ness does not exist. What? And then on the little history, the, the little um, symbols which tell you like what they do, it would, they have no professional background in this, yet like they're treating this random homeless guy as a professional in Loch Ness tology, right? The study of the Loch Ness monster. <laughs> I remember that. Um, and you ask, how is MSNBC or CNBC any different? And the answer is they're not. Right? Imagine the History Channel, such a proud channel. At one time, they actually talked about history based on fact. Now every show is about aliens and you know the Megadons and the Martians made this and that and all this crud stuff. Because they realize that, hey, if we talk about facts, our viewership will go down. No one will run commercials on us. And so we need to uh, convince our audience and get them to think that Bigfoot is real with our 10th different show about it. Ta-da! Now we're everyone's rich. And that is exactly why they don't like Andrew Yang. Andrew Yang is a social media rock star, but he's not popular in cable TV. It's because he's honest and he's real. He does not make up fake facts. He doesn't make fake claims. He doesn't knock himself out. He's not running fake news ads against Donald. He's a real, kind, nice guy. And unfortunately, cable TV, and I have seen the ratings, it doesn't work well. Nice guys finish last on cable TV. But if Andrew Yang went there and did what Bernie did, and, you know, um, <laughs> he would be popular in cable TV as well. But that's not his attitude. Um, his attitude, like, from the debates is to wait patiently, come up with good points. And, you know, and this drives me crazy about him. You know I don't like that. I'd much rather just butt in like Amy did and just take over debate time, regardless of if I'm answering a question or not. That's just who I am. But that's not who Andrew is. Andrew is someone who does care about the quality of what he says. So he would rather say less, but have it all be very good quality and be very humane than just say something that he may or may not believe in, but he knows they will catch attention, right? The whole Donald Trump impeachment thing, like I said, media feeds on negativity. They don't like positivity. I know this. Like, I work in marketing. I hire these efforts all the time. I understand why they do what they do because as a marketing person, negativity when you're running a political campaign, when there's just two people, is 10 times more effective. A negative ad about your opponent is 10 times more effective than a positive ad about your opponent. Uh, how do I know this? Because our positive ads are not about your opponent. Positive ad about you. I know this because I run both and I've actually seen the data. Because I've ran the campaigns on a state level in Texas. And it's sad, you know? It's sad when you turn on the news and another shelter burns down or Australia is still on fire. And it's like, you know, hey, can the news ever cover anything positive? And the answer is no, it cannot. Because by doing so, the ratings will go down. So we're in this spiral where all these news outlets are consistently looking for negativity, negativity. And Andrew Yang is not that. He is the opposite. He is a positive individual with a positive message. Well, cable TV is not going to be about that. Um, let me give you an example. Some of the most positive people I know. Uh, so you might be like Oprah or Ellen. You know, they have their own TV shows. That is correct. But. They're not news networks, right? They cover news kind of in a meme-like way, but they're not, or Wendy, Wendy. I watched Wendy. I forget what her last name is. Uh, she's really funny. <laughs> uh, Wendy's pretty funny. But um, I don't expect to get my news from Wendy or The View, right? I expect to get my news from my local news network or CNBC, MSNBC, or Fox News. But when I turn it on and it's all this negativity and negativity and negativity, about Donald this, Donald. and that's why Andrew Yang, by not attacking Donald on and not pushing the impeachment as like his other, like other people have, yeah, he missed a really good news cycle, but he did so knowing that he actually had. I've asked 
many times and if you follow this channel that like maybe he should lower his standards a little bit so we can kind of get in this mud with other candidates that are already in this mud but he just doesn't do it um you know i think for me personally i would interrupt whenever i had something to say in the debate just like every other candidate does no other candidate is just you know not raising their hand right they're speaking up and attacking and attacking i mean from the very get-go kamel harris attacked joe biden that set the tone for how this is going to you know how this is going to go and of course, because of that attack, when the second debate came with Camille Harris and Joe Biden, they hyped it up as a, oh, round two, who's going to, I mean, it, uh, the whole, that's what the media likes. The media likes drama and negativity. So when you have a candidate who's positive and has drama free, uh-oh, right? <laughs> Our ratings are going to go down. What happens when this candidate is elected president and he is not trying to fight these Middle Eastern countries and bombing them and you know this is it ukraine is it russia is it who is it um i mean good question <laughs> what does happen then you know what, imagine a new cycle where the news was oxy positive because your president was a stable individual and was making good decisions and helping people with universal basic income, helping people get jobs and, you know, surviving and build families and, you know, helping kids with autism and things of that nature. The media would hate that. The uh, cable media would hate that. But in social media, you have a lot of people who are inspirational, who people who are positive do well on social media. They don't typically do well on cable TV. Because, like, let's say a guest, right? Like, ESPN, they had this uh, Eagles dude. It's called, I don't forget his name. He used to play for the Cowboys. Then he played for the Eagles. Then he was cut. And they only bring him in to talk about the Eagles because they know that he's going to say bad things about the Philadelphia Eagles. It's, his name is, like, Orlando something. And every time the Eagles lose, you know that they're going to bring this dude in to talk bad about the Eagles. Why do they do that? Why does the guest they bring in always be like the most offensive person there it's because they're working for their money right if they want to get invited ba back they have to be the most racist and bigoted person there because then they're like oh you know hey we have another uh race issue let's invite that dude back because it was fun to uh you know a lot of uh, news coverage and snippets on youtube whatever i just think overall it is quite sad that our civilization has come to this but there's hope. And his name is Andrew Yang. Hi, guys.